taken a few months to assemble the CNC controller from the previous video, but here's an update. This is the CNC controller fully assembled. I got this enclosure, which is uh, 24 by 24 by 6 inch deep from a local recycler for 45 bucks. I did have to buy a new plate inside, but it was still a lot cheaper than buying one new. Um, got pretty lucky. I think it was a solar equipment uh, enclosure. It had two holes cut in it. And so I have obviously cut a whole bunch more at this point. Um, so on the front panel here, we have the rotor disconnect, the on and off switch, and the e-stop. It'll be one of three on this machine. The other two are this style. Um, and then we have the VFD poking out through the front. Uh, I did a couple of design iterations where I was trying to get that VFD to be fully inside this enclosure, but ultimately I gave up and poked it out through the front. The um, enclosure itself has this 240-volt uh, AC fan. It's a Stego filter fan, and it's going to blow air into the enclosure, so it'll be positively pressured when it's on. So I may uh, make some kind of gasket around here to prevent dust from getting in when the machine's off. Um, and then this is the another Stego. It's just a passive vent for letting the let the air out. And then this is a I think it's called Roxtech Easy Gland 16. So it's basically supposed to be an airtight and waterproof me mechanism to get cables in and out of enclosures. So we'll see how well that goes. And then over here we have three uh, amp meters, one for the main, one for the DC power supply, and one for the VFD. And then that rect rectangular thing is a temperature sensor for the gecko drives. All right, uh, this is the main mains power that comes in. Um, I chose this locking plug. This, uh, the outlets I have in my garage are 240 volt, 30 amp. So I went with this locking type to make sure that uh, if I had tripped or something, it wouldn't pull out. All right, let's take a look inside. Uh, pretty much, I think the, the layout had to change a little from the previous video. Uh, basically, I changed the side of the CNC machine, which this panel mount is going to be mounted to. And so I had to move all the, the field terminals and the outputs to this side rather than, than the left side. But other than that, most of the components are identical. Um, basically, the, the power comes in. <laughs> power comes in through the bottom here, runs up to the top, and then gets uh, bound to the immediately bound to this uh, grounding block. And that grounding block is bound to the back plate. And it's actually these these star washer nuts that bite in and connect connect the plate to the rest of the chassis. So those those, those uh, star, star washers are pretty important. Um, and then, yeah, basically the same, same layout, rotary disconnect. Then we feed a, a two-pole breaker for the entire box. And these are C-type tripping curve to uh, accommodate a inductive load. So be a little more permissive. Um, this is the AC bus after this uh, breaker. And then power from here feeds this uh, DC power supply. And then this, the sole purpose of this is to run the latching circuit through the e-stops that control this uh, contactor. And then uh, the contactor's auxiliary contact participating in that uh, latching circuit. And then after this contactor, this bus, which is controlled by this one, feeds power to these circuit breakers. So we have two circuit breakers, one for the DC power supply and one for the BFD. Um, power comes over here to the uh, Antec 800 watt linear power supply and outputs 56, 24, and 12 volts. Uh, th that power comes out and then feeds into this uh, DC bus. So the Basically, I have one circuit here that is fed from that 12 volt. There's one for the 24 volt, and then these five are 56 volts for the to drive the stepper motors. And then these, actually, these six are, are actually 12 volt, but they're they're fed from a different source. They actually are fed from the the power source of the BMDX 
424. They drive the, the uh, proximity sensors and the Z touch plate. All right, uh, here's the, the brain of the operation. Um, I put, I basically fabricated a little standoff. It's a little hard to tell. It's, it's primer gray here. It's just made out of steel and it lifts the circuit board off the bottom of the enclosure. And then it's also lifted off that by little nylon feet. And then this is underneath here is the is the uh, the PMDX 407, which is the daughter board that controls the spindle on off and direction. You can actually mount this directly to this uh, uh, motherboard, but I chose not to because I didn't want to obstruct my access to these terminals because they they would just be double deckered. I figured this was a better layout. And then that's about it. Uh, the gecko drives on their heatsink. Underneath their 12 12 volt uh, CPU fans run off this circuit, um, and then coming out here, these are the field terminals. Uh, this is the e-stop loop that's just shorted for now, and uh, yeah, basically these these are the uh, sensor wires uh, for the proximity sensors, and then these are all the motor outputs basically. Each one of these is one stepper motor with that expansion. Um, all right, so that's about it. Um, obviously, it <laughs> takes a lot of work. Uh, took, took a lot longer than I thought to, to wire this thing up and, and get all the cable labels and everything. I definitely recommend having a, a schematic. I mean, you can write it on a piece of paper if you want, but it's just you need you need something to go after because it quickly turns into spaghetti junction uh, and I've done some QA basically testing I have proof of life all the, mo the motors are functioning I've done a little work here just some uh, initial testing on the proximity sensors and all that it seems to be working uh, I think my next step is to do a little more testing on the spindle and then uh, mount it and get the final connections going. Thanks for watching.